Hello, Mark Ostalt from ADM Investor Services International. Uh, with some thoughts this week on uh, commodity prices and above all from the aspect of what's going on here with in terms of supply chain disruptions and the influence that it's having on it, and also a little bit of context relative to the dollar. So the first chart this week is uh, a familiar one. It's the Goldman Sachs Commodity Price Index. Um, as one can see, we are practically back to the sort of levels that we were back in January of last year. Um, it is a broad swath of commodities which have recovered quite strongly. Um, I think it's worth contextualizing in terms of that, in terms of the performance of the dollar. So the second chart is the US dollar index. And I think the important part in, in this respect is to note that as much as uh, the Goldman Sachs Commodity Price Index has been rising relentlessly, um, one could only really attribute a lot of this to a weakening dollar in the period between March and July when uh, the US dollar index lost about 10 points. Uh, over the past couple of months, it's really only lost about two points net net. So it's not the only factor contributing to it, so, but even, even if it has been an influence. Um, <clears throat> The uh, first of the commodity charts is uh, the soy US soybean future. Um, agriculture has been an area of commodity prices which have been uh, very weak with heavily um, oversupply um, and uh, long, big overhangs. Uh, but thanks uh, above all to a recovery in, in China uh, due to its uh, for um, soy and soy meal um, uh, for uh, uh, pig, pig feed, pork feed. Um, this has recovered and is uh, rising at very rapid levels to the sort of highs that we saw uh, not so long ago and which led to a sharp setback. Whether that's going to be the case this time, given there's quite a lot of supply chain disruption also involved here, above all in South America amongst the big producers in Brazil and Argentina, uh, remains an open question. Um, then we come to chart number four, which is uh, the US WTI oil future. And as one can see, in, in essence, that has actually mirrored uh, quite a lot of what the dollar did, though we have had a good spurt at the end of December and beginning of January in terms of oil prices. But it's probably more a reflection, uh, obviously, uh, of um, <clears throat> Um, out, outlook for global demand and obviously in re recent weeks we've had some pessimism appearing as uh, the vaccine related hope has been somewhat stymied uh, by the fact that the infection rates are rising and we've even had some occurrence of rising uh, of uh, reoccurrence of infections in China which has put a little bit of dampener on people's expectations here. Nevertheless inventories are being run down there and that's worth being, keeping in mind. Um, my uh, fifth chart is the copper future, um, and it goes together with the sixth chart, which is the US uh, SOX Semiconductor Equity Market Index. Um, as one can see with copper, um, this has been an absolutely relentless rise. Um, again, in the first instance, related to supply chain disruptions, but laterally also uh, related to what's happening in the sixth chart, which is the SOX Semiconductor Index. Um, <clears throat> And this is driven a lot by uh, the lack of supply or the deficit of supply for uh, semiconductors for the auto sector. And uh, the auto sector recovery has obviously been an important part um, in terms of the industrial production recovery globally. So there is relatively speaking, um, <clears throat> A strong demand here and it's not just related to hopes for a global recovery. Uh, a lot of it is related to supply chain disruptions and those supply chain disruptions may not actually evaporate once we get things back to normal and I think that's an important thing to bear in mind with relation to uh, commodity prices as we go forward.